Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, before I start this year of Plastic Weekly videos, there's something I need to get off my chest. Uh, you might know that I love messing around with competition formats, for better or for worse, and I've got one that's been stuck in my head for basically four years now, ever since a traumatic youth comp drove me frickin' crazy. Uh, and it's time I let go of this. It's really important at the start of the year you let go of the things that have been troubling you, uh, and I cannot let go of the bad thing that's keeping me inside so i've chosen to let go of this i'm going to put this comp format out into the world and if you have thoughts i'd love to talk about them with you uh, and if you run comps it's something you should consider uh, using so let's uh let's uh, get on with this this will be a short video it's a small tweak but it can only be used at some bouldering events it works for events that use a five on five off uh format for qualifiers and semifinals but unfortunately it doesn't work at world cups as long as they're using their split qualifiers where you have group a and group b it won't work in that scenario so this format is pretty well limited to things like american and canadian nationals or even divisionals provincials regionals assuming they run a qualifier and a semifinal round so the idea, you already know how a boulder event works. All the competitors climb the same five qualifier problems. Based on their score from those five problems, we send the top 20 to semifinals where they climb another four problems. We use those four semifinal problems to cut the field down to six, and those are your finalists. So the small change I want to make is this. Instead of narrowing 20 athletes down to six using just the four semifinal problems, I want us to use both the problems in semis and qualifiers to determine who goes to finals. So adding the five in qualities plus the four in semis for a nine problem score to go to finals. So example, if I'm in qualifiers and I score five tops out of the five problems in qualities, I have a score of, uh, or sorry, four tops. So I've scored four out of five in qualifiers. I make it through to semis. I only top one of those four problems. But because I scored uh, four tops in qualities, one top in semis, my score is five in total. Five tops out of nine problems in total. And that's the score I would use to determine whether or not I go to finals. Uh, the best possible score you can achieve basically is nine tops out of nine problems. So why do I think this is important? Well, first, I want the best athletes to go to finals. And the most honest way to find the best climbers is to test them on as many different moves as possible. You and I already know this. That's why we don't determine who goes to semis based on a single boulder problem, because individual boulder problems can be of a particular style that's not your style. And you get wrecked, even though you're stronger than the other guy. It turns out that, you know, this was a dino that they're exceptionally good on, even though you kick their ass in every other regard. So the more problems we get, uh, the easier it is to tell who is actually a better climber. In the current system, an unbalanced set of semifinal problems can put someone into finals just because they got lucky with that particular set of boulders. They just fit their style, and that absolutely happens. You and I have both seen rounds where a middling competitor has a good round, and they end up in finals, and then they tank. Um, so I was looking for some, some good examples. I really like this particular example from a couple of years ago at the Asian Championships. I remember watching this and it tilted the hell out of me when I went back to look at the, uh, at the, um, at the qualifier scores because in finals, somebody was fairly lackluster and it turns out that I don't think they should have been in finals at all. So let's take a look at this. We're going to turn on this here. This is the Asian Boulder Championships uh, in Kurayoshi held on November 7th, 2018. Uh, you can see Meichi Narasaki won the event, second place was Kaito Watabe, and third was Yufei Pan. So let's look at the finalist scores. Uh, Meichi topped all four problems, and then you've got some people that top three, some people that top two, and then someone that topped no problems in finals. It happens. I'm not going to blame people just for that. Sometimes finals just doesn't go your way. I wanted to know who this was because I don't know this sixth place climber, Chuk Hai Ho. Sorry if I pronounce that incorrectly I've, I've never heard of this climber otherwise so let's look at semifinals did this person really earn their way into finals we go back to the semifinal scores and it looks like they did now this is the kind of semifinals that scares the crap out of me because you can see the very best climbers i'll order it by semifinals for you the very best climbers and semis only got two tops you'll see quite a few people got two tops some just got one and some got zero now, watching back at this event, uh, 
Two of the problems in semifinals were basically irrelevant. Problem number one saw a lot of tops and problem number four saw a lot of tops. Nobody topped number two and only one person topped number three. So when we talk about more problems, doing a better job of determining who's best, if you have a messed up round where a couple of the boulders become irrelevant because no one can top them or inversely, if everybody tops them, you're now trying to separate a field using only two boulders and that is a recipe for disaster. So let's go back to this. So I can see our mystery competitor, Chuk Hei Ho from Hong Kong, scored two tops in this semifinals, uh, which meant he earned his way into finals in the current system. But if we look back to qualifiers, we can see that this same climber only scored one top in qualities. Now, is that a good score or not? Well, let's order everything by their qualifier rank, and we see that our competitor came 18th in qualifiers with just one top. And it turns out, if we look up here, he did just squeak in. A bunch of climbers topped all five. Some topped four, some topped three, some topped two. We are talking about a competitor who in qualifiers barely held on, just barely squeaked through into the semifinals. And in semis, due to some messed up problems, he managed to qualify for finals. So my argument for this system is, this is somebody that I can tell just by looking at semis and qualities together that they were not as good as some other climbers. For example, let's look at someone he beat in semifinals. We'll look at uh, Tomoaki Takata. In semis, he only got one top. He didn't make it through to finals. He didn't have a very good semis. He only topped one. But in qualifiers, he topped five of five. He, in fact, came, what, second place in qualifiers? My system proposes adding these two rounds together for a combined qualifier and semifinal score. And if we do it like this, we notice that our top six climbers all top seven, six, or five problems to get through to the finals in this proposal. Whereas the competitor that bombed in finals only topped three tops total. Three tops should not be enough to make it to finals if you have a full six that have topped far more than that. In the actual real world scenario, the six tops from our Hong Kong competitor, or sorry, the three tops from this Hong Kong competitor was half of Tomoaki Takata's who didn't make it through to finals because of the current scoring system. This is the kind of nightmare that I'm always terrified of. And it is one of those scenarios where you can look at someone who makes finals and you can say, okay, technically you made it to finals. Technically you're an Asian championship finalist but you didn't really earn your way there. It's the, the best example I can think of. And unfortunately, I don't really watch that many other sports. So this is a ridiculous metaphor to compare it to. But you think of somebody like a Gerald Ford. Technically, he was the president of the United States, but he was never actually elected president. It, it was a weird confluence of events that got him there. So yeah, I'll say you're a finalist at this event. But if I really dig into it, you weren't a particularly skilled climber to get there. So this would happen a lot less if instead of disposing of those qualifier results, we add them to the semifinal result to get a better picture across nine problems of who really climbed best during the event. I promise you, anybody who does better cumulatively across qualifiers and semifinals will have a better likelihood of doing well in finals on average. My second reason for wanting to use uh, cumulative scoring is that semifinals are a very weird viewing experience. The best performing athletes climb last, which means we have to watch the worst climbers fumble away without actually knowing what they need to achieve to make uh, it through to finals. Does the 20th place athlete need to top all four problems or will just topping one problem, or in the case of our example, two problems, will that just be enough to get them through to finals? It's not until about three quarters of the way through a semifinal that we can really start to build a storyline around the competition. And that makes for a confuse, uh, confusing and not very compelling uh, viewing experience. If we begin semifinals with everyone already having a score, being your score from qualifiers, but out of nine instead of out of five, storylines are already cooked and ready to go when the round starts. So me, Tyler, I come out into semifinals and I am already behind the top six climbers by two tops. So 
I'm the first athlete out in semifinals and already you understand the context. If I can't top at least two problems in the semis, I'm out of the game. So right away, my first attempts on problem number one matter, right? No more watching someone climb in semifinals and then having to wait 60 minutes before we know if the result is good or not. By carrying over the qualifier score, we already have a story to invest in and we already understand the context of what is happening every time somebody gets on a boulder. And my third reason is I think this would make route setting better and easier. Currently, root setters have a really tough job of trying to cook the perfect four boulders uh, for a semifinals. Setting qualifiers is relatively easy. Most comps have a pretty small pool of top talent. So whittling the field down to 20 competitors isn't actually that hard. In fact, sometimes a qualifying round will have like an easy gimme problem because it's like, why not? You'll make some kids day and you don't really need that problem to help with the separation. Plus, ties don't matter in qualifiers very often because countbacks to qualies are extremely rare. Conversely, semifinals have a reputation of being the hardest round in the comp because the setters really do want to get the six best climbers to finals. And often, a little tweak of a problem or an athlete eating a heavy lunch is all it takes to scramble the field when you only have four problems to test them on. Harder problems, even if they are skin-shredding bloodbaths, are more likely to get you the right finalists. It's a brute force approach, but unfortunately it's the best option that setters have with the current format. By making qualifiers and semifinals cumulative, I believe you can balance out these two extremes in a boulder event. Because every boulder in the qualifying round can now matter in a countback scenario, setters will be less inclined to allow easier problems and qualifiers. And in semifinals, it won't be as necessary to achieve separation with insanely hard boulders. You've already got some separation now from the qualifying problems. And across nine problems, ties are less likely. So with a larger set of problems, the problems can level out a bit in difficulty, leading to less torn skin, a more consistent target for the setters to aim at, and a broader menu of relevant problems for competitors. So that is, in brief, my argument for cumulative scoring. Five qualifier problems cut the field down to 20, but a total of nine problems are used to determine the finalists. It doesn't change the setting requirements at all. It doesn't change the schedule requirements, and it doesn't change your facility requirements. This is a very small tweak. Your scoring system will need a little change, but computers are perfectly capable of counting to nine these days. You will get better climbers and finals more often. You'll get a better spectator experience and the setters will have an easier job of doing it. So give this idea some thought. If you run competitions, consider using it for an event that you're gonna host. If you know someone that run comps, tell them about this video. And as always, if you wanna discuss this idea, leave a comment or join the Plastic Weekly Discord. If you join that Discord where we sometimes go off on the rails on some topics like this, I could probably convince you that using cumulative scoring across all three rounds, so qualifiers plus semis plus finals, sounds crazy. For some events, it actually might be a really good idea. Um, join the Discord, I might be able to convince you of that. Anyway, I apologize for the mustache. In hindsight, that was probably a mistake. Big thanks to uh, my Patreon supporters, especially the G5. Uh, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe. A big thanks to uh, two uh, donors, Nate and Man, who have actually helped with scraping a lot of these uh, results uh, to help me make some videos. Uh, so thanks for that help. And of course, the 2021 season of Plastic Weekly will be coming up in the next couple weeks. The videos are already recorded, so I will see you in the next one.